Okay, hello everybody, Francesco here. I'm going to be bringing you through a narrated, narrated walkthrough of the CARS, Controlled Articular Rotations. These are developed by Dr. Andrea Spina. And um, it takes a little while to explain them and to get used to doing them. I've done a couple of editions myself. But uh, I also post a video of me just going through the rotations, everything, so you can follow through with that once you kind of get the idea of how these are supposed to be done. The better you get at these, um, then you start adding other things to them to make you stronger in those ranges of motion we're going to go through. But this can be a morning based thing. It only takes you about 8 to 10 minutes to go through the entire series right after waking up uh, or right before you're doing your workout. So keep that in mind. Um, the narrator walkthrough takes a lot longer to go through. All right, so we're going to get started. First thing we're going to do is stretch from your wrists. I'm going to do this sitting so I can explain it better, but you can do this from a standing position. Both your hands flexed okay, at the wrist as high up as possible. From here, you can imagine there's a pencil on each finger. Okay, and I'm going to show this with one hand because it's easier to show demonstrate with one hand. So I'm going to grab the forearm to keep my forearm from moving and twisting. And from here, I'm going to just draw a giant circle from that pencil tip all the way around. My hand on my wrist is there to make sure my forearm doesn't turn, and then I can explore the actual ranges of my wrist itself and not trying to borrow from the rest of my body. So drawing a big circle both directions, trying to do four circles each direction as far as you can through. The other one I want you to do with your wrist is with the fingers, you're going to go into a crunched fist position, and then you're going to open into extension. So everything crunches in, everything extends out as far as possible. Do that four times as well. Okay? You can do it with both arms at the same time, but I find it's easier for people to work one arm at a time. It makes a better mind-body connection. Next one is your elbow. Now the elbow flex and extends, and it can also rotate. So we have to make sure to pin this down so we don't borrow from our shoulder to help us rotate. So you want our elbows tight to our sides. You're going to make two fists. You want to turn your hands out as far as you can, twisting outward as far as you can. And from here, you pin your shoulder, uh, arms down, and you're going to do this air curl, kind of like air guitar, but air curl. And you're going to curl up to the top, and then come back down again. Then turn it over so the palms are down. Come all the way up to the top, and back down. So you do four of them here. You do four of them here. Okay, pretty simple. Keeping those shoulders pinned down, elbows pinned down. Don't allow yourself to raise up. Uh, the goal is to get the fist as close to the shoulder as you can, and then back down again. All the while, you're trying to either twist your hand out to the entire scale if possible, or have it turned inward. So rotate it outward, rotate it in. Next one is your scapula. Um, with the scapula, in the back here, this is the shoulder rotations in a way, but it's your scapula that's rotating. So from here, okay, we're going to try and make sure that we're not going to arch in our back, all right, as far as anything goes. We're not going to try and lift our elbows up very much. Just try to keep your arms down in a straight position, pin them to your side if you have to. And from here, you're going to go into these big scapular motions. And the hard part, for me anyway, is when you pull back and start to rotate down, and then you go from the down portion into the front portion, you have a tendency to skip that and just go straight to the front. So try to do your best to maintain the biggest circle possible all the way through. Now going backwards tends to feel pretty good for most people. Once you start to go the other way, um, forwards to start, from here going forward, people tend to catch in their shoulder. A lot of scar tissue build up sometimes for some people, so I find backwards works pretty well. You can do forwards, just see how it feels. And if it keeps catching on something or it's hurting, then just do the backward ones. The other one is for the shoulder socket. Okay? For the shoulder socket, you're going to pin your shoulder down okay, as far down as you can go. From here, I'm not going to let my body twist as I do this. I'm going to pull the arm across my body, across the body. Okay? You'll feel your pec activate here. And then from there, or contract. You keep it across your body all the way up 
And then once I get to here where it's starting to hit my face, I'm going to let it float around my head. And from there, it's reaching back as far as it can. From there, I'm going to turn my hand out, okay, as if I'm going to catch something falling from the sky to the side. And then from there, I reach back as far as I can. Okay, I'm not going to let myself twist. I'm going to reach back as far as I can, keep my body straight forward. I'm not going to arch with my back. I'm going to keep everything flat. This is all only, only your shoulder, all and only your shoulder. From there, I'm reaching back, 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 as far down as I can. Okay, so from here, it's reaching back as far as I can. Then I turn the hand around and come to the front of it. When you reach the back segment here, you might feel your tricep cramp up or your lat cramp up because that backward motion activates both more. So coming to the front there and then I'd repeat that. Going across, up, reach back, here, all the way down. And go slow, right? Four rotations, you can go the other way too if you want. Both sides. Uh, the other one I want you to do is try to reach back behind you without turning to collapse the shoulder forward too much. Try not to. All right, but try to keep that shoulder, the elbow behind you, and reach up as high as you can. And then from there, reach over the top as high as you can. Okay, I'm trying to avoid pushing my head forward here, trying to avoid arching my back here, pushing my shoulder forward there. I'm just trying to see if I can maintain as much as I can that position of the shoulder going through those ranges, all right? Next one is gonna be your head. This one's a little tricky too. There's just a lot of things you can do with this one. From here, keeping everything else nice and down, shoulder blades down. You're gonna bring your chin to your chest. And then from here, you can either look to one shoulder or the other, whatever side you decide to do from that position. You're gonna tip your head to the side. Think of bringing your ear to your shoulder, but don't lift your shoulder up to your ear. The goal is to keep the shoulders down and bringing your head to the side. From there, I am going to start looking back and up towards the ceiling. Then I go to the opposite side, keep that shoulder down, keep that shoulder down. Then I turn my head and twist and down to the front. I go the opposite way, chin the shoulder. It's really hard not to let your shoulder lift up. It's part of the training. Keep that shoulder down up, side, here, and down. Now, as you're going into the back, you might feel a little bit of cracking back here. So the way to try to get around that is one, either don't go so far that you start catching on anything back there, or two, as you're coming back, you have to also think about lifting and growing taller. So we're not just trying to crunch down, we're trying to lift up and grow taller into those positions, and that tends to help you get around those spots. It's hard to stay focused on that, but that's what I've found to be the best way to get around that area. Next one is going to be your rib cage and your spine. Very similar to what your head does here, okay? So I'm gonna try and keep my hips as level as possible, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a glute contraction to keep my hips from arching back while I'm doing this. And you can do this from standing too, but I'm just gonna do this on the floor to uh, help see what's going on here. So. I'm going to cross my arms across my chest just to make this simpler. And from here, I'm going to round my back as much as I can. So I'm making this nice rounded position. And then I have a nice lifted arch position. Again, trying to avoid the lower back, the hips coming back here. Keep those tucked in and just see what you can get from your spine by itself. You have front and back flexion. You have side to side flexion, okay? You also have from the front flexion, the twist toward each hip. From there, you can go side, lift up to the back, side, down, the front. All, all this is gonna get you really warm in this area because you're really working all those different spots all the way around, four, four times each direction, okay? Now we're going to move on to your hip. This is another hard one to work with. It's often best if you use something like a chair to stabilize you while you're doing this so that you don't fall over. Because when you're focusing on your balance, it's hard to focus on your range of motion. So from here, I'm going to bring the closer leg up 
as high as I can. So from standing position, I keep both my legs fairly straight, lift my legs straight up as high as I can, and from here, I'm gonna pull my knee out to the side, okay? Or abduct out to the side. From that position, I'm gonna then rotate inward from the hip, and my leg's gonna come downward. This is, this is a hard one to do for a lot of people, so try to pay attention if you can. From here, as I come to the side, I am going to rotate down. Now the trick here is to not let your hip pop out to the back. So if you watch this from the side, if I'm here, here, my hips are level, and then as I get to here, I keep my hips level. Most people will do this. They'll turn their body to the side and then come like that. And when you do that, you're actually using your other hip, all right, to allow you to get that range of motion, and it's, it's you're faking it pretty much. That's useful for doing skill work. It's not useful for when you're trying to get more range of motion in a joint, okay? Two different things. So you have straight up to the side, and then the inward rotation. This one, again, takes a lot of practice. As far as you can, you'll feel the muscles on the side here, all this stuff getting really, really active. And then from there, you have to bring it to the back. And as you bring it to the back, another one of my problematic areas, the extension from here, here is bring it to the back, okay? If you make sure that your hips don't dump forward and you keep them in a tough position, this will actually tell you your real range of motion. Once you do that, you're actually borrowing from your spine and dipping into that area. And it looks like maybe that you're using your hips, but if you actually look where you're, where you're bending at, usually people use the spine. So do your best. One, two, when you get to here, you pull back, try to keep those hips tucked under, abdominal flex. All right, and that'll tell you where you really are at. And you can see that for me, okay, not that great. Gotta work on it. Um, and that goes to the front again. And then from there, I can pull across a little bit, up, internal, extension, up to the front, a little bit of rotation. When I get to here, a little bit of rotation will do you some good. Pull that leg in. So you can see that um, from here. I get my, I get my internal rotation when I do this part, I get an internal rotation. My leg is turning inward to do that, right? But when I come around and extend up, then I get my external rotation right there, okay? Lift up, back to the front, and around. So that one takes a little bit of, little while as well, and uh, you'll feel it all along the side, inside the hip. It feels really good afterward. Let's move on to the knees. Not everybody likes the knee part because you gotta pick with your knees. So this one, before I do any kind of knee rotation, I'm just gonna pull my pants up here. And I'm going to push my kneecap around. So I'm using my thumbs. I'm gonna gently push my kneecap, try to get it to move down toward my shin in a line. And then I'm going to slowly come around it and just try to push it the opposite direction of where my thumbs are and just see if I can get it to move in all different directions. If you're having a really hard time moving it around, it could be because it has some restrictions in there, and just doing some manual manipulation of it can help that out. Both sides, this one's a little tighter on me, I can feel it. I can at least feel that it has a little bit of restriction in it. Good. Four rotations each direction, just fine. This one's another hard one for people because of the flexibility necessary. Bend my leg up, take the same arm, put it underneath the hamstring, grab the opposite bicep, and take that hand and put it on top of the thigh. Essentially, this is a rear naked chokehold, um, but uh, if it's too hard for you to move your leg doing this, you can ease off of it and just go to your hands here if you need to, but I'm okay here. So from here, Okay, I'm gonna flex my foot, okay? And then I'm gonna go through extensions, and flexion, extension, and flexion. Now, if you look at my foot, okay? The thing that's cool about this is this allows me to turn my foot outward and inward. Just like your hand has this internal external rotation in the elbow, your forearm, right? Has, Extension has flexion, extension, and rotation. Your knee does the same exact thing. 
Okay, so from here you have extension, you have flexion, you have rotation from the knee. And that's where the really good stuff's at, is learning how to rotate from the knee and being able to move that back and forth. Okay, and that's also why you want to try and lock off the upper thigh so that it doesn't rotate and help you with that. You want to be able to isolate this area and strengthen that range of motion. So from there, I have extension, flexion. I can also do extension while my foot's turned out, foot's turned in, going through circles like this, accomplish this quite a lot. All right, four times through each side, turn in, extend up, out, up, out. All right, going through that range of motion. Finally, get into the ankles and then we'll get to the toes. Okay, so for here, we're gonna try and keep our shins, grab a hold of our shins here. Now, I'm gonna let my feet point until my toes touch the floor or my ball of the foot touches the floor. I don't have very strong plantar flexion pointing, so this is gonna be very small for me. So for right here, and then from there, that's the end range of that motion. I'm gonna do big circles here. Now, just like the wrist, when we did the wrist circle, rolling the joint in the wrist circle area, same thing happens here. I don't want to get help from the rotation of this, of my shin. So I want to just focus on getting as much range as I can with just the feet. So I might have to just focus on one. to really get into that area. Four times each leg. Now, as far as with the toes, I want you to also crunch them and then extend and open them. Crunch them, extend and open them. This can be pretty hard for a lot of people to do, especially if you wear shoes that are really tight and your feet are kind of stuck in this crunched in position like that. Learning how to spread them out can take a little bit of time, but just thinking about it, just to go through Four repetitions of just thinking about, am I crunching them, am I trying to open them, right? It could have a bit of atrophy, and we'll go through some things later on that can help you out with that. So that's the detailed walkthrough, all right, of the whole entire controlled articular rotations um, series. And uh, now you know more detail what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, I consider this to be something everybody should be doing um, on a daily basis if possible. And you'll see that when we do the whole entire uh, walk through it doesn't take that long to do okay thank you guys train safe